Hi, welcome to Luxury in Moderation, where we appreciate the finer things in life without going overboard. Today's video is part two of how I received my Hermes Birkin at the Paris flagship store. If you haven't watched part one, make sure to watch that first because I go into how I got the appointment on Thursday. It wasn't through the online system, but basically I did get an appointment at 3 p.m. on Thursday. So on that day, I arrived at 2.55 and I checked in with the people at the leather department for appointments. And this time there were two people. One was the unpleasant man that I spoke with on Monday. And then another was a lady who I'd never seen before, but she seemed to be in charge of check-in. So I told her my name. She looked for it, scrolled through the list that she had and she clicked on it. Yes, okay, you're checked in. She was like, please have a seat over there. Um, and then she walked me and my husband over and she asked us if we wanted anything to drink. There was also another guy waiting. So she went and asked him if he wanted anything to drink. So we just sat there and we got, you know, some water. For the first 15 to 20 minutes of waiting, I was very nervous. I was rehearsing what I wanted to say. I wanted to mention I was on my honeymoon. I wanted to mention I was an Hermes customer, that I had a garden party bag already. I had on both Click H bracelets that I have, and also my legend sandals. I was like, this is all the prep work going into finally the appointment that was coming. But actually, um, we were waiting, waiting. At around 45 minutes to an hour of waiting, I was like, what is going on? Like, is this normal? So I had my husband go and ask. The lady was like, oh yes, this is just a process. You know, we're very busy today. You are second in line, so please just be patient. So finally, at about an hour, the guy who had been waiting before us, um, a, a sales associate had come up to him and was asking his preferences because I over him saying like, oh, yes, I want this bag. And, you know, do you have something like this? And he was pointing to photos on his phone. And he was also like, you know, I'm going to have to take pictures because this is for my sister and blah, blah, blah. So the sales associate was like, OK, let me go look for these bags for you. And then, you know, she came back with some boxes and led him away. So I was like, OK, it must be my turn next right that's a good sign so we did some more and more and more people started to show up and wait and I was getting quite agitated by the time we had been waiting for an hour and a half I had seen some other people check in and were seen by sales associates I think and I was like maybe it's because they were in the normal online system that they were prioritized over me whereas you know I was just put in a Google Calendar appointment. I don't know. And then I was seeing some people who had waited, who had come after me and were waiting. You know, they were getting all agitated. Finally, after we had waited for about an hour, 45 minutes to almost two hours, my husband went to ask again, like, what's going on? And the lady told him we were actually fifth in line now. So he was like, what? Like, I thought you said we were second in line an hour ago. And he could see on her phone that, you know, the time since we checked in was about two hours ago. So she seemed to be surprised at that as well. You know, she had obviously forgotten about us. Um, you know, there are so many people who was checking in and, you know, I don't know who's prioritized in what way, but there was a prioritize button that apparently she hit on the phone next to my name and it jumped us from number five to number three. So I don't know if the other two people that we couldn't be prioritized over were, you know, through the online appointment system or maybe they had complained as well. But basically, he came back and told me this and I was very, very frustrated because um, he said, the lady said, you know, you'll be seen at like 6.15 or something. And I was like, that is just ridiculous. We've been here since before three. So I started going around figuring out, you know, can I talk to a manager? Can I talk to somebody? Like, I don't think this is right. Finally, I spoke to the unpleasant man who was manning the check-in desk. And I didn't want to be accusatory and say something like, you know, I've been waiting for two hours and be that rude customer. But I wanted to state the facts. Um, so I just said, you know, I've been here since three and now you're saying that 
I'm going to be seen at 6.15 and just show on my face how ludicrous that is. He just said very simply, uh, you'll be seen before then, uh, but it's a very busy day. You know, the candid answers. Again, they are trained to say all these candid answers. But after that, I did go sit down. You know, I had let him know that I had been waiting for two hours already. Um, and I saw him pull over a leather sales associate who I had seen help another couple previously. And he pointed at me. So he was asking her to help me immediately. And I don't know if he kind of like explained that, you know, we've been waiting for two hours. She did come over to find me. And at that moment, we had actually found the lady who had helped me on Saturday with this Click H bracelet. And she kind of gave an introduction as well to this leather sales associate of like, oh, you know, I helped her before. And, you know, it was nice to have a connection with you know the previous sales associate now this new sales associate and i don't know if that helped at all but basically this leather associate she seemed to know what she was doing she brought us over to a quieter area and she asked what can i do for you today i knew at that point i could have launched straight into like i want a birkin blah blah, blah. but i also wanted to say everything that i had rehearsed so i mentioned you know this is our honeymoon our first time in paris we're super excited and i have a garden party at home so i love how you know there's two handles i like the shape of it so i would really love to have a birkin now my husband doesn't think that the storytelling and all of that helped at all uh he thinks that even if i didn't say any of that um the lady would have been willing to help and provide a Birkin offer. Um, but I don't think it hurt. So I just, you know, said it anyways. So after I revealed that I wanted a Birkin, she was like, uh, what size? So again, I started off with saying, you know, my garden party is in a size 36. And I think that's too large. So then she was like, Oh, so you want a 35? And I was like, No, actually, I would like a 30 or maybe even a 25. I can't remember how she asked what color I preferred. But I said that I liked neutrals and I liked grays. When I said grays, she immediately said a taupe. Um, but actually, I had preferred an aton, which is more of a pure gray. And then I also said, you know, any of the gris line um, and also noir black. Um, so these are all the things that, you know, I had rehearsed and I had looked up and researched. So those would have been my color preferences. So then she asked, what about the clasp? And I was a little confused at first, but then I realized she meant hardware. So I said, you know, I thought palladium hardware was beautiful as well as gold hardware, um, especially rose gold, um, because actually my first choice would have been any bag with the rose gold hardware. I really love the Hermes rose gold and I know they don't do it with every color. So, you know, I did a little bit of research, all of the colors that rose gold appears with, I would be happy with. So that was my main ask. And she kind of grimaced and said, you know, if I have any, um, cause I do know that they are more rare. Um, so I knew it was a very small chance, but I wanted to at least have my say, right? And she was taking, you know, notes in her phone, I think, you know, just in the notes app. And she was like, anything else you want to tell me? And at that point, I guess I could have left it. But I said, oh, in terms of leather preferences, I prefer Epsom or Togo. But I also have very little experience with um, a lot of Hermes leathers. So I'm very open and I want to learn more about all the Hermes leathers. So she was like, okay, um, she wrote down Epsom. She asked a few clarifying questions. She said, in terms of size, do you prefer 30 or 25? So I did say 30. And then she also said, do you like the new Birkin style? And I was like, what do you mean by that? Because I thought at first she meant like the embossed Birkins, which I don't like. But she said, you know, oh, where the stitching is on the outside. And I was like, oh, yes, sure. I'm very open with that. So I think at that moment, she already kind of had this particular bag in mind. Um, so she had planned to bring that out to me. So she said, okay, let me go look. Um, so she went off. I think we were waiting for about 10 minutes and I was freaking out. I was like, oh my gosh, should I have narrowed it down to only Epsom leather? What if they don't have any Epsom leather? And then she comes back with nothing. Um, maybe I should say like, oh, I'm okay with anything. Um, but finally she came back with the box in her hands. At that point I didn't know what to do and I didn't move. And she was like, can you follow me? 
So we went up the stairs um, first to the jewelry section. She was trying to look for um, a place without any people. Um, but I think at that point, the store was so crowded. It was late on a Thursday and um, we tried to go into one room and she saw that there were people. So then she backed off. And then we went finally into the ladies wear section into a changing room, which was quite large actually. And she was like, can you please go in there? Still holding the box. And she kind of closed the door halfway saying, something like, oh, it's quite rare, basically meaning that she didn't want to open the box with other people around, right? So we sat down and she was like, I found something for you. So she started listing off the specs of the Birkin, but she was going so fast and I was like so excited that I wasn't really paying attention. And finally she brought out this Birkin and then she was like here and I was, I took it and I was like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. But Actually, when she had said that it's a Birkin 30 in a tube, I was quite disappointed and a little bit nervous because I didn't think I would like a tube. I was like really trying to love the bag and I was just in my back of my mind, I was like, it's a tube, it's like not the color that I wanted. But again, like I said, everything else about this bag was my first choice, it was Epsom. Um, so I was just like so happy at that point to actually be offered a Birkin. I couldn't believe it was actually happening. I was like, can I open it? She was like, yes, of course. I, um, tried it on and then she was like, it's, oh, it's yours if you want it. And I was like, yes. Um, and then it was kind of an awkward pause. I didn't know if she was expecting me to say anything else, but I was like, oh, I also want to get some twillies with this. So she was like, okay, we can go down and get some twillies. But first, you know, she had to register that I bought this piece. Um, so basically anytime you buy something in the stores, like they have to look up your profile. Um, so the very first time I was in the store and I bought the Click H, I actually had to register my profile. I typed in my name, my passport number, my address, and I had her look up my profile. So that was the first time that she actually saw my profile. Um, before that, she thought that, you know, it was my first time in the store and like maybe I hadn't bought anything. We'll get into, you know, what I actually think matters, but basically she had no idea I had a purchase history at the store. So she scanned, you know, the Birkin, she put it back in its dust bag and box, and then we went downstairs and she had an accessory sales associate pull out some twillies for us to choose. Now this was back in the main part of the store because obviously a ton of people go into Hermes to buy scarves and she undid the top of the dust bag so only the handles showed. She obviously didn't want to show off that, you know, I had been offered a Birkin. Everyone would have been, you know, trying to ask her for one, right? So she did pull out the handles so we could compare if the Twillies that I chose would match with the colors. Um, so here are the ones that I picked out. So I did go with a pink. Again, I was a little bit concerned about the color of tube and I wanted something that I loved the color of. I'm, I love pink. So I thought that a pink twilly could kind of like offset how much I didn't love the tube color. Um, so this is the first one I picked out and then they're like, do you want one or two? And then my husband was like, oh, we should get two. So I was like, okay. Um, so this was actually his pick um, because um, it is also pink, so it will match, but um, it has the horses on it because of course we all know Hermes is started in horses and he was like, oh, you know, that's very Hermes. You should get something like that. So after I had picked these two out, the accessory sales associate again looked at my profile, scanned these into the system and I was brought over to the checkout counter and then they brought out the huge um, orange bag, which we actually asked for a nondescript white bag because they do provide that, you know, when we were waiting for basically two hours and we were doing a lot of people watching and seeing people leave with big bags. There is also some white bags that they provide. So you're not like just screaming. I have a huge Hermes bag. It also had a very cool, like discreet, flap over the top so you could actually cover you know everything that's inside the bag let's get into what i think actually matters and dispel some myths here so through my research i've heard people say oh you're judged as soon as you walk in the store that may be true but it has nothing to do with whether you're going to get a bag offer or not because 
um, the people who greet you at the door, the other sales associates who see you walk around, they have no idea who you are. They don't know your name. They don't know your profile. They don't know that you're going to go to the leather section and check in for an appointment if you have one. Okay, first myth. Second myth, as I already mentioned, I do not think that sales history matters because like I said, I was offered my Birkin without the sales associate, even knowing my profile at the store, even really confirming my name. Again, she had no idea that I had previously purchased three things at the FSH store. So I do think I could have purchased nothing and she would have offered me the Birkin bag. On a closely related note, I do not think purchase history has anything to do with the online appointment system. I think those systems are completely separate and the online appointment system might be connected to like the check-in system so that they can verify, you know, oh, this person got an appointment, they're actually checking in at the right time, blah, blah, blah. Once you're checked in and then you're handed off to a leather sales associate, they don't pull up your profile. They have no idea if you've purchased before, what your um, official name is or anything. So I do not think the two systems are connected, although we played it safe. And basically because I had already uh, confirmed an appointment on Thursday, I did not reapply to the online appointment system just in case they were connected. I also do not think that what you wear matters that much. As I mentioned, I wanted to maximize my chances. So I wore my Hermes sandals. I wore my Hermes bracelets just to show that, you know, without a doubt, I was an Hermes customer and I wasn't a reseller. I think that even if I hadn't worn all these things, she may have been inclined to offer me a bag. Um, so basically, I think that once you get an appointment, they really, really try to get you what you asked for. As long as you're not obviously a reseller and you're not going in there being like, I want any bag, um, they will probably, you have a high, high chance of getting offered a Birkin or a Kelly or a Constance if that's what you ask for. I also have no idea if my sales associate was inclined to help me more because she knew that I had been waiting for two hours already and it did seem like two hours was above their average because I don't think they want their people waiting that long. I think that if we had complained um, at about the one hour 15, one hour 30 mark, that they would have tried to rush and get somebody to help me. And finally, um, it's pretty clear that at least at the FSH store, each of the departments work separately. So the accessory sales associate who helped me on Saturday had nothing to do with leather, had nothing to do with small leather goods. When I told her I was interested in home goods, she brought me up to the home goods sales associate who helped me. Um, so, and even, you know, this leather goods sales associate who offered me the Birkin, when I asked for the Twillies, she told me, you know, we're going to have a accessory sales associate help us because she's more familiar with the Twillies. So they're not interconnected, you know, they might know each other. Um, but I think even if you establish a relationship with one of the associates in the other departments, it doesn't really help you um, in terms of getting a leather appointment. We um, definitely got lucky on Saturday when we asked the leather appointment lady if we could get an appointment and she was able to offer us. Um, and it does seem like she had the power to give out these leather appointments starting at 3 p.m. because you know the first appointment she offered me was on Tuesday at 4. So it seemed like, you know, maybe she had offered the 3 p.m. spot to somebody else already, but for any of the other days, she was able to, you know, just put in any name she wanted. So it seems like the online appointment system fills up a certain amount of slots every day. And then who's ever working that position has the authority to add outside requests like mine. Also, I do think it depends on who's in that position because the unfriendly man who was working there on both Monday and Thursday, I don't think he would have um, been open to offering 
um, us an appointment if we had asked. Um, he just didn't seem open to it. Maybe he didn't have the authority to do it and maybe only the weekend lady had the authority. Who knows, these are all guesses at this point, but just telling you from my experience, from what I observed, those are my guesses. And then just some information I wanted to provide was, you know, after I created my profile at the store, each of the sales associate in each of the apartments, they kind of like scan the bar tag of whatever you're buying. And it feeds from, you know, their phone into, I think they can like transfer that to the checkout so that there, it's a completely separate checkout lady who processes everything. Another thing I learned was about the stock. Now it's well known that Paris and especially the FSH store has the best stock probably because they know the most tourists, the most people shop there. And that's why I really wanted to try to get my bag there only because I knew they would have the most possibility of even having a Birkin bag at other stores, they're probably like, yeah, we haven't had a Birkin for months. It so happened that the hotel I was staying at, the lady who worked there, um, she said her fiance's cousin worked at Hermes and she was going to try to help me in, you know, getting an appointment or, you know, getting a bag. So she was so, so nice. And she was like, oh, tell me what bag you want. And I'll, you know, call and ask him. So I was like a Birkin and maybe like a neutral color, like black, gray, whatever. And she was like, oh yes, totally understand. Um, so she called that cousin and she said, oh, unfortunately he was away on holiday. So he wasn't able to see me in the store. I don't even know if he would have been a leather associate it anyways um, but apparently he told her that um, for any of these neutral colors there should be no problem in the stock quantities people say that it's so hard to get a neutral I don't think it's because of a lack of stock I think it's because they might be more choosy in who they offer a neutral color bag to because you know they definitely don't want to offer a neutral bag to a reseller so the stock for these neutral colors shouldn't be the hurdle actually let me get into this last box here um because i did go to italy after paris and i had thought if i wasn't able to score a birkin in paris i would at least have the opportunity in italy so I first went to the Venice boutique and I asked, um, you know, if there's any possibility of getting a Birkin. At the Venice boutique, they said, no, it's only a waiting list. So only for people in Venice, basically. And then very similarly, when I went to the Hermes Florence boutique, she said, no, it's only open to residents of Tuscany starting in June 2020. So I think that this makes sense for Italy. And I'll go into like what I think about the Hermes culture in different countries and why this makes sense in another video. Um, but at that Florence store, I was finally, finally able to locate this piece, which I had been looking for everywhere because again it is very popular now. It is a homeware item and um, I was looking for a sushi plate. They did not have a sushi plate. They actually had this tray. So this is the square tray that I was looking for in the mosaic pattern. So this is what they call mosaic. Um, they have an all silver gray version, but I actually like the one with the orange. I'm so, so happy I was able to finally find it in one of the stores. It is much more shallow than a sushi tray, um, but I plan on putting my Hermes bracelets on it. I don't know. So let's get into the price points of all these things. This Click H bracelet was 605 euros, which was about $714. And that is more expensive than this Click H1, which was $620. I don't know if it's because there's more enamel in the H part or if it's because it's patterned, but it was more expensive um, than their basic one. And then the leather wallet was 855 euros or about $1,009. The Twillies were each 160 euros or about $190. And on the Hermes website, I do know that this one 
is listed at $180, but with tax, it's basically about the same at $190. Mosaic plate was 125 euros or $148. And then actually, the last piece here is a little soap in the Trilly scent. And this soap I got for 30 euros, which is about $35. And I actually only purchased this soap because in Italy, the threshold for getting a VAT tax receipt is 155 euros. So because the plate was only 125, if I had only bought the plate, I wouldn't qualify for any VAT back. Um, so the lady was very helpful. She was like, if you want that, you need to, you know, at least reach the 155 euros. So I picked out this soap. Now it is different in Paris. I think the threshold for Paris is much lower. I think like 100 euros um, to get that back. And they do have different tax rates. I go into that a little bit more in my travel uh, tips video. And I will also list, you know, all these prices in the description bar below, as well as how much VAT I'm expecting back for each item. I have to do a little bit of a calculation. Thank you so much for watching these long videos. I hope they were helpful and informative. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm very, very happy to help anybody on their Hermes bag journey. I know that I was so nervous going into it and I know that my story is much easier than many, many other people's. Honestly, I got so lucky in just requesting an appointment my first day there. Even though I was really frustrated waiting for two hours, it's nothing compared to other people, you know, having rejected from the online system like the entire week or taking trains to other cities. I'm so grateful to my husband who did uh, get the appointment for me. Um, as I mentioned, once you get an appointment, it's a much higher probability of you actually getting offered a bag. Um, so that would be the biggest hurdle. I am really looking forward to opening this last box and doing my 1000 subscriber giveaway. So make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye.